activities on other day, right? We should be talking about this. We should be thinking about this. And there were all sorts of things that, that were suggested on there. You should ask them about smoking and then weight cessation and finances and, and all sorts of that. But, but the reason why this was important is it really kind of put in a formal document the idea that we need to pay attention to how people are doing. It went from something that we should consider to something that we shall do in NFPA uh, 1582 and the 2022 version, where it says, hey, an annual behavioral check-in is now part of this standard uh, wellness uh, fitness. And so they asked for, uh, you know, it's all sorts of things. It's supposed to be non-diagnostic. It's a screener, right? We're not diagnosing people. It has to be confidential. It shouldn't be used to remove people from duty. And it specifies there's three things that we should really focus on. Post-traumatic stress, depression, active suicidality, and substance use. And I'm going to provide some information today that I think is why we need to go beyond this, those three things as a starter. Okay, so um, so like I said, I got approached by this group. Um, they kind of came in from the army mentality where like they own you and stuff like that. And they're like, we want to get information for command staff so we can make uh, uh, decisions on where people are, are moving. And I thought, wow, you have it exactly wrong. Right? Because if there's even any inkling that this information is going to get to the man staff, nobody's ever going to be honest on that. Right? So the focus really needs to be different. And so there's, there's kind of nine things that we really kind of consider when we put this together. Um, and so one, we want to use gold standard screening assessments. Uh, we know that behavioral health, just like physical health, is more than just the absence of cancer cells in your body. Right? We know that physical health is the same way. So we want to look at positive and negative aspects of it. Um, we think it's really important. We don't just gather a whole bunch of information. We want to use that information to get relevant education and feedback for the first responders, right? It's not just enough to have you fill out a couple of pieces of paper and get check boxes. We want to use that information to inform our first responders. We also think it's important to track changes over time because behavior health is a little, a little bit like weight gain, right? So um, I've gained on average 1.2 pounds for every year that I've been married. You should think, huh, you're eating. That's not bad, Mark. I've been married for 23 years, right? At some point, I got fat. Right? I'm not sure when it happened, but it happens. And behavioral health is kind of the same way, right? So it's very rare that somebody is fine, and then all of a sudden they're not. And they're gonna have a career and a choice. It's a gradual process. We wanna be able to track the changes over time so we can identify early and intervene. Uh, and the whole goal is to facilitate treatment seeking. And then we have this other part that we think is important, right? How can we use this information to make fire service better? How can we use this information to help departments make things better? And so um, the, this needs to be accessible to all departments, including our volunteer departments. That's why we do it on the phone, right? So it's literally online so that you don't have to have somebody file and do it. Um, we want department-wide the fire service change to protect first responders, and then the whole goal is save lives, careers, and families. Uh, we're just going to very briefly, we've got eight different surveys. Um, they're brief little surveys. Uh, the first one's basic demographics, because we do these kind of big presentations, so we want to see how the fire departments compare to other fire departments. We cover the big five, depression, worry-based anxiety, post-traumatic stress, um, uh, substance use. We only ask about alcohol and tobacco, even though some departments like ours in Austin, now you can have medical marijuana. Oh, that's a whole other talk. Uh, uh, and then sleep. And then we do look at positive psychology factors too, right? Because we want to make sure that we're, that we're addressing the whole person. And then we want to look at service utilization. Okay. Um, the nice thing about our program is if you get instantaneous feedback, you fill it out and literally uh, the report shows up on your phone. You can download a PDF, you can print it, take it to your spouse, take it to your, uh, your clinician, um, all sorts of stuff on that. The second level of feedback we provide is for the providers, right? Because the whole idea is that you're doing this during your annual physical, so we need to make it easy for the providers to have a conversation with you about behavioral health. And what we've really found is this is a really a crucial tool for having those conversations. Like, holy cow, it looks like your sleep is really off. Talk to me, what's going on? What can we do? And to have those scores and the screening status has been really very helpful.